Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping that on you. Hope everybody has had a great week. Uh, weeks winding down, hope things are falling in place for you. Uh, remain consistent, remain focused. Uh, be very clear of the destination. Be very clear of where you're headed uh, so that you can be aware of your path know that persistence uh, pays off uh, maybe not in a time frame that you originally had in mind but it does pay off um, moving on don't forget to show love show some support uh, we definitely need support for the work we do at the Odyssey Project if you know know and you have followed us for a while you know the programs you know the things we do from uh scientific research and studies program development uh community engagement and so much more uh me uh primarily through black men lead my wife through restoring girls forgotten daughters and so much more um now to answer a question uh that i've had asked more than once and I um, answer it on an individual basis, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now and I'm going to start doing it. Uh, for the people who ask, you know, what if I want to support what you do, but I don't necessarily have uh, financial resources, uh, discretionary financial resources, I definitely understand. Uh, my goal when asking people to support what we do is not to put anybody into a financial hardship or to strain anyone. Uh, I'm asking people who can give and desire to give to do so. But for those of you who still believe in what we do and would like to support, there are a couple of ways you can, there are several ways you can actually do this and it doesn't cost anything. First and foremost, like this video. In every video that comes on this channel, click that like button. Uh, comment on also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to the channel and finally share it with others uh, that definitely helps to support it it gets the word out it expands the word uh, it gives uh, us a more power, a higher power ranking in YouTube searches for people who are looking for content that we are creating uh, and it definitely will help with revenue generation so uh, that's one way to do it again. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and share it. Uh, now, I want to double back down on something that I talked about on yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. Uh, I think my wife shared a video and sort of a, uh, tapped on it and touched on it. It wasn't what her video was primarily about, but it was something that was on her mind. Uh, as you know, there's a big thing, a big case popping off in Houston about uh, these young kids who were left by their mother and her boyfriend. And there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about what has actually happened. There's a lot of ambiguity uh, about the details and details are slowly coming out. And I sort of just want to bring you up to date uh, on what is currently going on. Now, there are some questions. I know one of the questions that someone asked on the previous video is whether or not any of these children were the, the white boyfriends and the answer is no. Uh, the youngest child she has is actually the child of a black man whose mother, her and the kid stayed with about five years ago and then uh, because of some differences and some disrespect and some other things she was asked to leave and she left so the youngest all all uh from what i can tell all the kids the older daughter who was not in the home i think is 17 uh she wasn't in the home um and the 15 year old on down was in the home one of the kids had been deceased for almost a year uh, i think uh ever since uh november 20th of last year uh, the child that had they found the skeletal remains of and 
then someone was uh, saying that, you know, things aren't, aren't lining up. There are a lot of inconsistencies. It's not that it's a lot of inconsistencies. What it is, is actually a lot of, I mean, gross and grave failures and lack of proper attention that led to this. Uh, one of the things the person brought up was the smell. Anybody who has ever smelled a decaying human body knows that that stench is unmistakable and it is unbearable. It is horrible. But do not be mistaken. There are plenty of cases, cases that I've personally studied where people have lived in the house with dead bodies until the dead bodies had decayed and completely stopped smelling. That long, years. Um, there's a woman who literally killed her husband, put him in a container and kept him in the house. When they moved, she moved the container. She had the movers pack the container up and take it to the next house. Um, there was a serial killer, killer in, I want to say Cleveland or Cincinnati. Uh, notorious. It was a big case. Black guy was killing what he thought was were throwaway women that nobody was going to care about, drug addicts and prostitutes. And he was killing them in his house. And he wasn't burying them. He was just leaving them in a room. And there was so much grotesque stuff that they found when they finally went in there. The women were telling, say, this guy's doing that. Nobody was paying them attention. He's living in the house with those bodies. Um, somebody was questioning, you know, that a 15-year-old would be in the house and not tell anybody. What you have to understand is that 15 year old hasn't always been 15. And we don't know how long the abuse had carried on, but you know, just four years ago, that 15 year old was just 11. And this type of abuse didn't just start. So what you have to be, what you have to imagine is someone that has been so terrified and afraid, you gotta realize one sibling has been killed Another sibling has been uh, beaten so badly that they have a permanent, they have permanent damage to their jaw that's going to have to be surgically uh, repaired. And I think this is the nine-year-old. And when you have that type of fear instilled in someone. You will be surprised at what they will and will not do. You will be surprised at how many people have been kidnapped. And after a certain point of being held, tortured, and mishandled, were turned loose from their shackles and wouldn't run. Wouldn't say anything. Mailman come to the door, repairman come, wouldn't say anything. Just so afraid of what would happen if they said something and they didn't get the help they thought they would get. You, now you got to realize and think about this. Think about this. Is 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 this irrational fear or is the fear somewhat substantiated by what we can learn and see in society? If you go back to Jeffrey Dahmer, long before Jeffrey Dahmer got good into his spree, a young Asian kid escaped, ran away got to the cops but his English wasn't that good got to the cops was trying to explain what was going on Jeffrey Dahmer came out and said hey that you know he's he's with me it's obvious that this is a kid he says he's with me the kid was nude naked and the police let him take him back in the house of course they found his remains when they raided Jeffrey Dahmer's place so what you can understand is things, I mean, so many things that should have happened didn't happen. So you can understand why a child may not trust the system because look, CPS has been here. CPS has checked on us and they can't see what's happening to us. And so you don't develop a trust for the system. And it happens with domestic violence, with, 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 with adult women. Um, it, it happens in a lot of situations where that should be so many times that someone did something that would have ended this. Now, as I stated yesterday, the grandmother, the paternal grandmother, which is the seven-year-old's father's mother, 
was in contact with them about six years ago. They came and moved in with her and stayed with her for a while, but she found out that every time she would go to work, um, she's 71 now, so five years ago she was 66, so she was still working. Um, and every time she would get up and go to work, uh, this this the mother of these kids would bring men over. And so they had a disagreement about that and she asked them to leave. And she's regretting it now. She's, you know, obviously second guessing herself. But uh, I don't think you could have known that this is was going to come to this. It was going to get this bad. Um, and I talked yesterday about the importance of village mindset, uh, the importance of being aware, the importance of caring. We have such an individualized mindset that. We are disconnected. Our first response to anything that's going to require us to be invested and put forth effort and put some skin into it, our first response is, it's not my business. It's not my business. I'm not going over there. It's not my business. I'm not dealing with it. That's not my business. You know, uh, I'm not finna get it, caught up in that. I'm not. And what happens is people suffer in silence because no one. Uh, who has the ability to give them a voice by simply becoming engaged is willing to do so. Uh, one of the reasons why I do what I do is to give people a voice, to give them their power back. Um, you know, I shared with my wife earlier today a message I got from a past client who uh, wanted to say thank you. She finally got the courage to uh, publicly go after her, uh, the person who violated her. And uh, that's so common, you know, just how dysfunctional and broken we are. And to the point, it's so common that it's been normalized. To be broken, to be abused, to be molested, to be uh, the victim of incest, to be, uh, I mean, physically abuse has become so common that it's normalized it's just what is you expect it among people now you know you know you, you whisper about it you talk about it but hey it is what it is until we call it what it is until we do what we need to do to stop it we are going to end up in a terrible situation that will only get worse uh, the whole idea and concept behind community is collective engagement, is collective concern, is collective uh, activity and response to community needs. It's not just about what can I get out of it. It's not just about how you spend your dollars. It's about how you care for your neighbor. It's about how concerned you are. It's about what you're willing to do beyond your comfort zone to ensure that those around you are okay. It is a sacrifice. It is stepping outside of your comfort zone. It cannot happen with you withdrawn. It cannot happen with you sitting there and deciding that that's not your space, that's not your place. And I understand some people get real rowdy now. You can't say anything to their children. They're ready to fight. I get all that. But we have to start somewhere. We've got to sit up and say, look, this is unacceptable. There are certain things I'm going to see and I'm not going to care about how people feel about it. There's certain, I can remember, and it, it was just different. I can remember um, as, a, as a young child being out with my grandmother and somebody walking in and their kid is uh, jumping all around. I can remember my grandmother saying, hey, baby, you need to sit down. You need to sit down. And then looking at that mother with a look that says, you're going to do better. And that was a level of respect, even though the mother may not have liked it. That was a level of respect because that was an elder speaking. And they understood that. And that respect for elders, the, the respect and love we need to have for our, our women, all of that stuff is gone. And we are out here living our lives on our terms. And we actually think that that's freedom. No, that's something that was pumped into our psyche 
through the disruptive and dysfunctional programming that we see in media, whether it's on radio, whether it's on television, whether it's in books and magazines, whether it's social media, the internet, it's being pumped out there. It's a disconnected uh, mindset that we have adopted and now we're living it and we think it's normal and we think it's liberated, but it has totally disintegrated the nucleus of who we are and it has left us to fend for ourselves on an individual basis and that leaves us extremely vulnerable. We are going to have to do better. We are going to have to raise, have to raise the level of our awareness, and our awareness and our connectivity within the community. That's something that we're absolutely going to have to do. I'm not going to hold you any longer, but I just had to really tap into that and talk about it again. So as of right now, the children are with uh, CPS. Um, hopefully, uh, the paternal grandmother who has said she's willing to adopt them. Now, what you have to understand here is this is an old thing, and, and, and you have to understand the dynamic here. We're talking about a 71-year-old adopting a 15-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 7-year-old. That 7-year-old has at least another, what, 12 years of parenting left. This woman is already 71 years old. The community needs to be a part of that. The community needs to be the support system. There needs to be others who are willing to step in what she can't and if she can't. And it doesn't necessarily have to be blood. We've got to see and love our kids for who they are beyond what we see in uh, re relation. Um, kinship and relationship are not the same. Kinship is the connectivity by way of lineage and genetics. Relationships are the things we build and there's no limit to the type of relationships and the length of relationships and the depth of relationships we can build. It's the relationships that we develop and build that will have the long-term impact on our lives and the lives of others and this whole world and, and our communities. Um, and so it's imperative that we understand that we need to reach outside of the walls and the parameters and the constructs of, of, of kinship and start to see the world in the light that we're connected and we're connected as black people whether we want to be or not. And so we need to start behaving accordingly. We start loving. We need to start being a part of doing something that changes lives and changes situations. We need to be really looking to make the lives of the future generation better. And there's a lot of work to be done because there's a lot of brokenness out there. So I'm gonna leave you with that. Look, once again, show some love. For those of you who can't show love, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys take care, and we'll talk soon.